Many of you have strong feelings about geometry one way or the other, probably because of your success or um, not having success in school. Generally, what I found in teaching elementary school is students that struggle in math may not struggle in geometry. It actually could be an area that they will find success in and they'll begin to like it. It's only in the upper grades that geometry gets really difficult. But we're actually just dealing with shapes and their attributes and a little bit of measuring angles. Um, there are some transformations that we talk about and transformations are those slides, reflections, and turns. We deal with shapes and how they can be described, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional. So really for students, you want to develop a strong spatial sense. Get them to look, make, and touch both two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. Get them to be able to move shapes on a grid so they can see transformations and to visualize what shapes look like, especially three-dimensional, from top, side, bottom, basically all the way around. So here are some categories of the two-dimensional shapes. Basic ones for elementary school include polygons and then divided into two um, categories, which would be triangles and quadrilaterals, and then the various types of quadrilaterals that there are. For three-dimensional shapes, um, there are a few that we hit at the elementary level, and those are basically pyramids, cones, and prisms. So both on the last slide and this one, you can take some time to look at the descriptions and kind of help yourself to better understand those particular shapes. So now, not to entertain you, but I thought I would give you some stuff that you could use in your classroom to help your students um, maybe better understand some geometry. So I'm going to sing you these songs and I don't want you to judge me on how well I sing them, but I want you to think about how you could use them in your classroom. This particular song is to the tune of London Bridge and it actually has motions to it. You use your arms in this particular case and a line is your fingers extended completely out and your arms extended out. Line segment, arms still extended but you have fists because that shows a beginning and an end. Array, bring one arm in, the other kind of at your hip, the other one still extended out and then point kind of punch forward like a point. And so um, then when you get to the last line, you make large angles with your arms over your head, acute, right, obtuse, and straight. All right, so it's to the tune of London Bridge. Line, line, segment, ray and point, ray and point, ray and point, line, line, segment, ray and point, acute, right, obtuse, straight. And you can do this, these songs with your students. This is a great brain break to get them up and out of their seat and doing some movement. And you can also sing it in crazy ways, like in a country way or an operatic way or rap and let the boys play the drums or girls play the drums or whatever. But it's a lot of fun. Let's go to the next one. So this one is about the isosceles triangle and how fitting to oh Christmas tree. Oh, isosceles, oh, isosceles, you look just like a Christmas tree. Oh, isosceles, oh, isosceles, two of your sides have equal lengths. I can hear the applause now. The next one is to the tune of Are You Sleeping? Equilateral, equilateral, all the same, all the same. All your sides are equal, very, very equal. Equals in your name, equals in your name. Next is to the tune of Clementine. You'll remember that as Oh My Darling Clementine. Scaling triangle, scaling triangle, none of your sides are the same. All are different, you look so funny, and scaling is your name. 
Now that you've been thoroughly entertained with those songs, let me tell you a little bit about the videos for this particular week. These videos will help you better understand the terminology that is used, the math vocabulary used in geometry. It's very important for you to understand this vocabulary in order to teach it. So all of these particular videos deal with attributes of two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes and then how to use a protractor. Have a great time and use the songs in your classroom.